Hello, my fire sign babies. This is going to be a love prediction reading for 2024. Um, if you are interested in purchasing a personal reading or any of my handmade items, the link to my website is down below. If you are interested in getting yourself a free birth chart, which it really is free, um, that link will also be down below because I do recommend that you cross watch your sun, moon, rising, and your Venus so you can get a clear picture of what is going to be going on with you for 2024. And for that website, for the birth chart, it really is a free chart. They do um, offer you to buy a deeper reading of it, but you really don't need to. They give a lot of information on the free chart. So that link is also down below. Um, so go ahead and mosey on down to your timestamp for whatever sign you want to watch. And I will talk to you soon. Hello, my Sagittarius babies. We are going to go ahead and get started to see what is going on with you with love for 2024. Take only what resonates and leave the rest. Be sure to look at your sun, moon, rising, and your Venus. And like I said in the intro, the link to getting your birth chart is down below if you want to look at it. All right. Spirit. What's going on with my Sagittarius babies for 2024 when it comes to love? This card did slip out and then turn itself around. I think I'm going to go ahead and take it. But I'll explain a little bit more to you about what that means. That it flipped out and went back in to the deck. Got a lot of eights so far. Okay. All right. So it starts off with the seven of pentacles. There could be a connection that is going on that you feel like is hard work, but you're dedicated to it with the seven of pentacles. It's like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to keep putting my work in, but it's almost like you could be constantly thinking about whether it's worth the work that's being put in. It's almost like, um, you know, like the seven of pentacles, it's about you learning something new, right? So this could be a new path that you're not used to. And you, you're putting, you're dedicated to putting hard work into it to see if it's for you. We do have the page of swords. The page of swords is the one that flipped out and went back into the deck. So, it's almost like I don't want anybody to know what I'm studying on. I don't want anyone to know what I know. I don't I don't want to it's almost like you don't want to show your hand when it comes to what you're doing. Um the page of swords is about studying something or studying somebody or um you see all the books. So there there's a sense of you like learning something. And you don't want anybody to know that you're learning. So it could be something that you you want them, you want other people to believe that you already have the knowledge, but really you're getting the knowledge, you know? Um, so there's a sense of you not wanting to be vulnerable and saying, I don't know what I'm doing just yet, but I'm learning what to do. But there's that sense of not wanting to show that you're vulnerable to not knowing yet. So we have the Eight of Cups. The Eight of Cups is 
about moving away from things that no longer serve you. Now, this could be people, this could be attitudes, this could be, you know, um, certain ways of thinking, m certain mindsets. But we have the butterflies here. So there is a sense of transformation, which goes right along with what I was telling you about what you could be studying. It's like, I know I need to let this go, or I know I need to let that go. With the Eight of Wands, there's fast coming communication when it comes to something, okay? <laughs> I know that that narrows it down a lot, right? So there's some kind of fast coming communication and it almost hits you like an epiphany. It's like you're putting in this hard work and then you get the communication of like clarity. You get the answers that you're seeking. You get the answers that you're looking for. Or there's something that pops up and you're like, oh, that's the sign I was looking for. So I feel like that you could be looking for certain signs or you could be really... Uh, I'm going to keep putting the work in and keep looking at these signs. It's almost like you're doing something that you're not sure where it's going to go just yet, but you're doing the work anyway. So even though you don't know the outcome, you're putting in the work anyway. But something is going to happen to where you get your answer. You get your ironclad answer. And it kind of sweeps you off your feet. It kind of blindsides you. It surprises you. Because it comes like out of nowhere. So we do have the Four of Cups. The Four of Cups is about you looking here, but you don't see this coming in for you. You see how the butterflies are matching the Eight of Cups? So there's something that's coming in for you that's even more transformational. Because you're thinking that you're going to be getting the answer from here, but really you're getting a whole different answer. So from a different area, you know? So you could be looking for, um, let's say you're you're looking for the answer in book A, but really you get the answer from book B. And that's why I said it's going to kind of blindside you a little bit. And I don't think you're going to miss it. I don't think it's something that you're going to overlook. I don't think that you're going to miss the, um, the sign. I don't think you're going to miss an opportunity. I think it's just going to catch you off guard from where it, where you get your answer from. So we have the Two of Cups. The Two of Cups is about really connecting and bonding and really figuring out how you want to move forward when it comes to something. Once again, we have the butterflies. So you might want to look up butter, the butterfly for a spirit animal to see exactly what that means. But so far, this is really about you coming to a conclusion for yourself. Like you cementing something for yourself. You realizing something for yourself. Bottom deck energy we have here is the Ten of Pentacles. So once you have this conversation or once you have this heart to heart or once you have this talk, and you realize what you need to talk about. You realize what's... It's almost like you're looking for a missing piece. Once you find that missing piece, all of a sudden everything comes together. You could be going along and being like, okay, what is it that I'm missing? There's something that you're missing with the Page of Swords. That's why you don't want it to be known that you're looking for that missing piece. There's some kind of missing piece that you're looking for. You're putting in the hard work anyway, but you think that the missing piece is going to come from you putting in all this hard work. But really, the answer is something else. And it may not be as hard as what you've been making it. You may be doing, like, spinning your wheels in all these other different directions when really there's something else on the side that would bring it all together. And you're just not looking at it or you're not wanting to look at it because you're so busy studying in one area. So I do feel like that there is some kind of connection that you want to happen with somebody. But you feel like that there, there's something that's missing. There's something that has to come together. There's something that, you know, I, I'm, I'm shedding, I'm transforming, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But there's something missing that's keeping it from coming together fully. 
So with the Four of Cups, it, it's almost like Spirit is telling you, you've been focusing on this area on having, you know, you've been focusing on this area to bring it together. But really, you need to focus over here on bringing it together. And you notice, I almost feel like you're doing all this work here with the Three Cups. But it's really just one cup that probably wouldn't have been as hard if you had just paid attention to that one cup. So I feel like that, you know, you having this epiphany or you getting this knowledge or you getting this information, it's almost like I realize now what I have to do. So let's bring this shit together. And as soon as you make that decision and you realize what it is that you have to do, that's when all of this comes together. And look, you jump from the two of cups to the ten of pentacles just that fucking quick. It's like, okay, I was... I was looking to fix this in the wrong area. So that's where I needed to be. It's almost like um, the example I'm going to use is like a wound, right? Let's say you had a cut on your arm and you put peroxide on it. You put neosporin on it. You put a band-aid on it. You put some kind of adhesive thing on it. You did all this stuff to fix it. But what it took was for you to get stitches. So it's like you did all this other work, but really all you needed was stitches. So you just needed one thing as opposed to all this other 20 stuff that you did. And so that's the kind of thing that I'm explaining. You know, like, there is a connection that you just feel like it's a little off or you feel like there's one thing, but it is like you are studying and you're focusing on everything else except that one thing to fully bring it together. And it's going to come to you. And when it comes to you, it's going to come to you, like, real quick. And you're going to react on it. And I do feel like that you are realizing I should have done this a long time ago. I should have done this all along. This is where I should have been. Like, this is where I should have just went ahead and done this. And all of a sudden, your Ten of Pentacles is like, poof. So I do feel like that it could have been something that you already know. But you've been kind of like dragging your energy on it by distracting yourself by, oh, but I'm doing this over here. Oh, but I'm doing that over here. Except the one main thing that would have just already brought this together. We have the Six of Swords. See, after the Ten of Pentacles, everything that you felt was off, you're, if you feel like there has been like a lot of arguing, a lot of um, disagreements, a lot of maybe there have been trust issues, Maybe there has been uh, certain things that has been negative on this connection. You're moving on to calmer waters because you are acknowledging instead of working so diligently on all the stuff, you're finally working on that elephant in the room. You're finally working on that one thing that is going to bring it together. So it's going to to shift the energy, to be calmer, to be more trusting, to, you know, um, we have the emperor. It, it Not only is it going to affect your relationship, but it's also going to affect you in being more empowered. So there's a sense of trust. There's a sense of um, another person being able to look to you instead of through you, you know? So it's like they trust to look to you that you're holding that empowerment, that you can be trusted, that you actually have the knowledge to know what to do. And there's also a sense of um, you not having to be told. You don't have to be coached. You don't have to, you know, like they can trust that you're just going to know what to do without 
them having to tell you or there there doesn't have to be a whole huge argument we have the two of pentacles the two of pentacles is balancing out a very beautiful foundation it's like look you put in this work i'm willing to put the work in now it's like you are showing up and you're willing to put in the work of what you need to do it's like even though you have been putting in a lot of hard work like I said, it, it's almost like you're putting in hard work everywhere else except the one spot that, that needs a little work. Maybe it needs acknowledgement. Maybe it needs um, verification. Maybe it's a shift in your energy of, you know, showing whatever it needs that you need to show. You know, like it's some little, little thing like that and once that clicks in your head as to what it is that you need to do and you do it everything shifts to this like to the ten of pentacles to the six of swords you know to the emperor to the two of pentacles i mean and we have the queen of wands you know so there's a whole sense of um this is your energy here with the queen of wands having confidence and knowing what it is that you want to do We have, um, like, the Queen of Wands is Sagittarius, Leo, Aries energy. And the Emperor is Aries energy. We also have the Devil present. You could also be dealing with the Capricorn. But when it comes to the Queen of Wands and when it comes to the Devil, that is something that you have to be careful about when it comes to um, personal addictions, when it comes to self-sabotaging behavior, when it comes to temptations, that is something that you have to address and it's something that you have to look at and be aware. And also the devil represents fear. It could be fear of you going back to old self-sabotaging behaviors. It could be fear of you moving forward. It could be um, it can be a sense of, of toxicity. This Queen of Wands could also be uh, something or someone that you wanted to build something with, but they're toxic. And we have the Ace of Swords, which is a brand new clear, clear beginning. A very clear beginning. Like you have your mindset as to where you need to go and how you need to do it. It's about you finding that confidence in order to do it and not be fearful and to forge ahead through your fears. We have the Nine of Cups and we have the Hanged Man and the Two of Swords. So the Nine of Cups is you taking care of your own emotional stability. You could also be dealing with the Pisces. You don't have to be. So the hanged man is about not knowing what to do and with the two of swords needing to make a decision and being in your head about it. And with the four of swords, you're going to surrender to the fight. It's like there, there could be a fight going on that you're surrendering to and we also have the empress. So I feel like there could be outer chaos that is trying to come in and keep you from connecting to your empress. Because the empress here... If you look at the card, she's facing forward. She's facing the future. So there could be something that comes up here where you're going to have to show what you want to fight for. And you have to show what you need to fight for. And this could be like a repeat thing. Like this, there could be a certain connection where you didn't really fight for it the way that you needed to. Well, that lesson is going to come back up again. You know, so it's like if you had the opportunity to show how important a certain connection was and you didn't take that opportunity to fight for it or let people know what you were fighting for or put people in their place or anything like that, that that lesson is coming back around with the five of wands. So there's going to be some kind of, you know, it's, it's going to. Kind of leave you, leaving you in that spot. 
a rock and a hard place. But you're, you know, you're going to have to decide what you need to fight for. And with the Empress being here with the world, that is a lot of abundance, prosperity. That's a lot of planting seeds. The Empress is Virgo Taurus energy. So there is a sense of growth, you know, like needing to grow into this space. And it it's something that you manifested, like you manifested this to yourself. There is a sense of you needing to protect what you have manifested to yourself. There is a sense of you needing to have your voice and speak out on it and be very clear with other people that they cannot fuck with what you built or they cannot fuck with what you have. And you're going to have to fight through that fear of conflict. I feel like that you could have a fear of conflict. Like you don't want to put waves in the water. You don't want to upset anybody. But I'm going to tell you, it's more, it's better to it upset people that are outside of your circle than to upset people that are right next to you. If you have an empress in your life and they have been there for you as an empress, planting seeds and building things with you, that's who that's whose feelings you need to protect over outside people. So there is a sense of you having to learn that lesson again. And I say again, because here it looks like you're kind of avoiding the whole lesson. Well, I'm going to learn this instead. I'm going to learn this instead. Nope, I'm going to learn that instead. But really, it's the whole lesson here in the middle that you're avoiding that's going to come back around again. But you'll learn it. You'll learn it. We also have the Seven of Swords present. You know, the Queen of Cups. There, there's a lot of deception. People trying to be deceiving around you. Trying to kind of bend you to look in another direction. And it's going to be up to you to what you focus on. You know, are you going to let temptation or people on the outside, you know, put their energy in? It, it's really about what you decide we have the dreams to face card coming out too, but the seven of swords is finding a different technique in order to win something. Okay. So it's really going to be about you taking a look at yourself, what it is that you want, what it is that you want in your life and being really strong in owning that. With dream space, you are working on your dreams. You are definitely working on your dreams. And we have the Ace of Cups, which is a brand new beginning at love. You know, like if you have a partner in your life and they don't feel secure or they don't feel like you're sincere, then you could possibly, you know, you're kind of on the edge of possibly losing them. You have to like really stake your claim you know there there's a real strong message for you to stake your claim and not feed into the, the negative energies that are outside your circle that you're trying to build we are going to pull some cards We're going to pull some messages from the universe. Spirit, what messages do you have for my Sagittarius babies for 2024? What messages do you have for my Sagittarius babies for 2024? We're going to take those. Hold 
on one second. Okay, so I had to get one that fell onto the floor. All right, so we have, and we'll do the bottom deck energy as well. Look at all this red. We have to begin the practice of allowing, I must get out of the way and let spirit give me direction. So it's not just about what you are trying to learn. It's about you actually paying attention to the signs that spirit is trying to give you. Remember I was telling you how you're working on everything else except the lesson. And that's why the lesson keeps coming back to bite you. There's something that... It, that is in this that you're going to have to be vocal you are going to have to fight for it you're going to have to let it be known exactly where you stand and not just to the person that you're talking to the five of wands indicates that there is outside energies that you're going to have to put in their place you're going to have to speak it quit being afraid of putting waves in the water and start worrying about the feelings of the people who are actually there supporting you. It's almost like you're you're worried about the backlash of outside instead of worrying about the backlash and possibly losing what you have on the inner part of your circle. So we have my super attractor power comes from how I feel, my faith and love, and the joy I put out. And I do feel like that this is entirely true. You focusing on your own self-love and realizing that you deserve love and happiness and you deserve to move forward is what's going to attract it to you. Yes, but there is a sense. Look at the circle right here. There, there is a sense of you also needing to protect that once you have it. We also have each time I choose to tune in to spirit, Guidance of the highest truth shows up for me. And that's where the lessons come in. You're not going to get the highest truth unless you learn the lessons. They can show up all day. You can ignore them all day. But there is a sense of you needing to stop something. Like you need to stop and really put your foot down on some things. Once you see the truth of what you need to do. It's a wrap. So we also have, I feel my way into faith one step at a time. And you are, you may be taking your time with this. You may be taking your time with this, just trying to take one, one step at a time, trying to do what you can. But once again, just remember, you have to protect what you are building. We have true manifesting is about receiving what is of the highest good for all. I do feel like that you are trying to be the person to not ruffle any feathers. You are trying to be the person to not upset anybody. Just think about who you want to protect more though. Because... There's going to be people out there who are not going to like what you're doing. And they're not going to like seeing you protect other things or other people or anything like that. And I do feel like that you are, you know, trying to avoid putting those waves in the water. So just remember that the good that you have in your life is what you manifest it to yourself. And that is what needs protection. That is what needs to be fought for. It's what you built. It's what you are building. And it's going to take time for you to see it. It might even take time for it to click. You know, if you are in the emperor energy, you don't necessarily want to see the sign. You don't necessarily want to see that there's something there. But I think that you already know that it's there. And you know you're going to have to face it at some point. You're going to have to speak your truth at some point. So, that is what I have for you for this year 
Sagittarius, please like your video. Comment down below if you resonate. Um, subscribe if you want to and share. I'm sending you a bunch of love, light, healing, and protection. Have a great year and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hello, my Aries babies. I'm going to go ahead and get started to let you know what your love prediction is for 2024. Take only what resonates, leave the rest. Um, I'm going to drop a link down below for you to get your free chart, uh, birth chart, if you are interested in getting one, so you can listen to your sun, moon, and rising to get a full view of your love prediction. You can also look at your Venus. All right, spirit, what do you have for my Aries babies? For love for the year 2024. What is to come for them? So far, I'm seeing a lot of, I'm seeing a lot of patience going on. Patience. Okay, this came out sideways. I'm going to read it like that. Bottom back energy we have is the temperance. You could be dealing with the Sagittarius, don't have to be. You could also be dealing with a Leo or another Aries. You could also be dealing with a Pisces, you don't have to be, or a Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus. So, with the Temperance card, I see that you're trying to balance things out. You're trying to heal. You're trying to take a moment to pause and see where exactly you are. It's like you could be in a sense of reflection, of looking back at what you have been through in past relationships or just past things that have gone on. With the Eight of Wands coming up, we have the Eight of Wands, the Three of Pentacles, the Four of Wands, the Hanged Man, the Knight of Pentacles, and the Knight of Wands coming out sideways. So with the Eight of Wands, I feel like there could have been some things or there will be some things that's going to pop up like out of nowhere, but it's going to be pleasant surprises. I feel like it's going to be very unexpected. This could be communication. This could be an epiphany. This could be a message from, you know, your higher self or from your angels or even from God, the universe. Letting you know exactly what it is that you need to do. And this brings on a sense of peace for yourself. We have the Three of Pentacles, which means that you could be collaborating with somebody when it comes to money. You could also be collaborating with somebody on building a home. How to build up your money. How to bring something together. And we also have the Four of Wands. The Four of Wands... For some of you, this could signify marriage, um, but it's really transitioning from one space to another. The Four of Wands is about a transition taking place. So you're moving from, like for some of you, you could be in a friendship and you're moving on to love, or you could already be in a relationship where maybe you are just dating, but then you move on to being engaged or you're moving on to being exclusive. If you're already married, it just means that you're going to deepen the relationship that you're already in. So there is a sense of something waking you up to where you're like, I am ready to take the step. Now, for some of you, if you're single, then you have somebody in mind that you want to take a step with or you want to build something with them so 
with the hanged man being here, I don't see you being hung up or being confused or or being like, I don't know what to do next. You know, I don't see you procrastinating in any way. I just see you taking a pause in enjoying the space that you're in now because it actually feels good to you. So with the Knight of Pentacles, it is a slow and steady wins the race. Let's plan this out together. Let's communicate. Let's, you know, see where we want this to go. Like, you're very interested in what they have to say, and they are very interested in what you have to say. So it's like a total collaboration. So when it comes to the Knight of Wands, the Knight of Wands, um, when it's upright, it is somebody who can be... Um, a very creative, somebody who gives a spark of life, somebody who's fun, doesn't take life too seriously. But since it came out sideways, I feel like that you're trying to show a person that it's not just about games to you. It's about where your intentions are coming from. So there's a good balance here of you showing your fun and spontaneous side, but there's also a part of you that wants to show your strong and serious side too. There is, there's a feeling of like, I need to show all of me if I'm going to show any of it. So it's like, it's not just showing the bad parts of yourself. You want to show the good parts of yourself as well. And there's a really good balance on that, especially with the temperance card coming out, which is a lot of self-reflection. So I feel like that you're looking at yourself and you're like, do I play too much? Do I, am I serious enough? Do I take on enough responsibility? Um, do I seem like I'm flighty? It's like you're looking at certain things and you're like, do I come off a certain way? And if I am not really about that, then I need to show a different side of myself. And that's where that self-reflection is coming in. You know, do I joke around too much? Okay, well, let me show that I can be serious too. And that I actually want to do that. You know, am I, uh, you know, am I too indecisive? Well, let me show how I can make a strong decision. And you know, show that I'm solid. So there is a sense of you wanting to take your time and show how solid and reliable you are, how trustworthy you are. The Knight of Pentacles is the slowest moving knight, but also the most solid, the one that you can trust, the one that um, you can, you know that you're going to make the right move with the Knight of Pentacles because the Knight of Pentacles doesn't make a move unless they are absolutely sure of what they're doing. But with the Knight of Wands coming right after it and it's coming out sideways, it's telling me that you don't want to be like all boring and grounding and things like that all the time. So it's like you want to show that you can have fun too. It's not just all about business. It's about you balancing everything out. So I feel like that you're trying to not just, um, I don't, I don't see it as you try to make a good impression. You're just trying to be yourself. And as humans, what we tend to do is let me show one side of myself and whether you do that out of fear or whether you do it because you're, you don't want to be entirely exposed or feel vulnerable, you're throwing all of that out the window and you're like, I'm just going to be who I am. And I'm not a jokester all the time. I'm not a person who, who just plays games all the time. I'm also an adult that likes to take care of things. I'm I have a good business sense, especially with the pinnacles. I have a strong um, set of values that I want to also build. You know, so with the Knight of Wands coming out sideways, if you had like some kind of reputation of, of being a play, like a, a somebody who doesn't... I almost want to say playboy or playgirl, you know, like if you have that rep reputation of being a playboy or a playgirl, it, 
it's like you want to get rid of that reputation. It's like, I want to show that I can be committed. I want to show that I'm not flighty. I want to show how stable I can be. And that's where you're taking that pause as to, you know, this is where I am now. And this is what I'm valuing about myself. Because maybe in the past, you were not what you are now. And, you know, once again, with the temperance card showing up, it tells me that you are doing that self-reflection, that you want to be a better person, not just for yourself, but for the relationship that you're building. I think that you're realizing that being in a relationship, it's no longer just about you. So, you know, two, two heads are definitely better than one. And I think that you're realizing that. And that's where you need to... that. That's where you feel you need to show that you're serious about this to where you feel like an even, even counterpart. Like you don't want to come off as being, um, flighty or untrustworthy or anything like that. So I see you really doing that. So under, see the justice card, the justice card. So the justice card is all about karma. What you reap is what you sow, right? So the justice card is here to call out our bullshit to us. So with the justice card coming out, it tells me that there is a sense of balance here. So you may be in a situation where you want to be taken seriously, where before you may have just fucked things off, right? So this could be a, a situation where... You're having to prove yourself from a different light than what you were before. Like maybe you showed that you were, you were this knight of wands that didn't care and didn't want to commit and was just about playing games and this, that, and the other, right? So now you're having to prove your, yourself to yourself and also to someone else that you're not that. So the justice card showing up is you having to face yourself and what you have done of what you're trying to not necessarily erase, but prove that you've grown from. Okay. So we do have the 10 of wands. This is going to be, you, know, you feel like this is a struggle. You do feel like that this is going to be hard work. But the Ten of Wands also signifies that it's the end of a cycle. So it's not going to go on forever. Like this, this struggle of you having to prove yourself is not going to go on forever. We also have the, the Lover's card popping out, which is Gemini energy. Um, but it doesn't have to be. Once again, Gemini energy is facing... It's like the yin and yang. You're facing yourself. But this is also about having a very deep connection to someone that you feel is worth going through this transition for. So I feel like that they challenge you or you challenge them or you could possibly challenge each other in such a great way that you're highly connected. Not just in the 3D, but also in the 5D, in the spiritual realm. There's something about this connection that with the Ace of Swords coming out right underneath it, you're very clear about what this connection is. And that's why you don't have a problem showing what you need to show. I feel like that this could be one of those cases, you know, when, um, we're, when we're in a lower vibration, we can easily tell ourselves that I'm never going to do this again. I'm, you know, I'm never going to love again. I'm never going to you know, be, I'm, I'm going to be like a player for the rest of my life. I'm not going to ever settle down. And you may have taken on relationships that was like that. And you may have even started off this relationship in the same way. But there's something about this relationship that you're like, oh shit, this is different. So you're realizing how important it is. And this is what you have been training for with all, all the past shit that you went through. You were training to be in this situation now. So it's like all the, the hardships that you went through when it came to love in the past. Learning from how people may have played you, how they may have lied to you, how they may have misled you. It taught you 
how to use your discernment, or at least it should have taught you to use your discernment. And you're realizing that this is what it feels like to actually trust and connect. This is what it feels like to actually have a counterpart. And you, you do realize that it's different. You absolutely realize that it's different. And this is why you're not looking at that. You know, it, it's almost like you're looking at it as, yeah, I did this. I, you know, I showed this side of myself. I showed my ass. Now, you know, it, it's worth it to me. I can't even be mad. I have to put good intentions into it and show that that was not the real me. And this is the real me. So there is a sense of you really getting that kind of clarity. And you're going to have a brand new beginning once you get that clarity of wanting to work on it and move forward. This is really awesome. We also have the Seven of Cups. The Seven of Cups is you, you know, seeing what your different options are for how you can go down this path of using your heart, of showing what it is that you you can do. And I feel like that there's going to be more ways than just one way for you to do it. I feel like that you're going to look at certain things and be like, you know what, I'm going to show it like this and I'm going to show it like that and I'm going to show it like this. It's almost like if you were in a lower vibration and, and you showed your ass in so many different ways, right? You are wanting to come back and show your higher vibration in the same manner, but on the opposite side of it. I hope that I'm explaining that right. Like if you showed that you were um, untrustworthy, you showed that you were a liar, you showed that you played games, you know, we'll just stop right there with the list, right? So you showed those three things. Well, now you're on the opposite side where you're looking at it. You're like, well, I want to show how trustworthy I am. I want to show how much I can love. I want to show, you know, how much I can be reliable. And, you know, so it's, it's the opposite side of what you're trying to do. And so you're seeing it as, as many mistakes as I made, I have to make as many good intention actions you know, and double that, you know, to make it solidify. So, you know, um, you're willing to put in the work. I don't see this dragging out. I just see that it's an exercise of what you need to do. It's just a, it's, it's something that's not going to, um, like, last for years and years and years and and you're actually going to be rewarded for your efforts i mean this is a beautiful connection that you have that's going to be building and it's not something that's going anywhere as long as you put the work into it it's very grounding it's very abundant it's very prosperous but now you are on a mission to show how much you want to keep it and how important it is to you. All right. So we're going to pull some messages from Spirit. There was just now a horn that honked uh, behind my building. So that could be a sign for you to really pay attention to what's about to be said. Not that you shouldn't have paid attention previously, but all right, Spirit, what messages do you have for my Aries babies? What messages do you have for my Aries babies? There's also sirens going on, so this might be really important for you to hear. And I also feel like the cards are a little bit jumpy. It's like if I could read the whole deck to you, I <laughs> there's probably a lot of messages coming out. Not that many. That's too many. 
Okay. Oh, I like that already. That resonates with what I said previously about you just kind of sitting in the space that you're in. All right. So we have, I release time and let the universe show me what to do. This tells me like you had the temperance card where you're just kind of sitting there and you're, you know, observing and you are, you know, looking at how you used to be versus how you are now. And you're, you're loving the energy or the space that you're in compared to before, you know, and I feel like, um, for some of you who do feel like you have something to prove or you feel like you need to um, make up for something or to show who you are now, I feel like that you could be a little bit confused on how to do it, you know, the answer of it. So you might just be sitting and waiting to see what your answer is. It's almost like um, what just came to mind, there was a, a talk show that I was watching earlier and I heard the woman tell her boyfriend I want to trust you and I want you to make up for what you did but I can't tell you how to do it you know and me myself I've actually used that phrase before you know when I have talked to others you know that that have hurt me or they have broke my trust it, it's like that's the kind of space that you're sitting in. It's like, I want to earn the trust back, but I don't know how to do it. Or I want to, I want to show a different side of myself and show that I'm not the person that they think I am when I was in my lower vibration, but I'm not quite sure what to do. And so it, it's almost like, um, it's like that feeling that, Whoever this is that you're trying to get to understand that you're a different person or you're trying to get their trust back or you're trying to show them how solid you are, it's almost like they're taking the stance of they didn't show you how to mess it up, so they are they can't show you how to fix it, you know? So it, it's one of those things of they don't even know what you can do to fix it, but you're on a mission to find that answer and... I feel like spirit is definitely going to let you know. And this is a sign to let you know to just literally sit with it. But once you get the answer, do not drag your feet. And make sure you say it as loud. There was something that I used to tell people. If you can't apologize to me as loud as you made your mistake, then don't apologize to me. You know, like some people... They have a hard time making up or even admitting what they did. But it's like if if you do it in, I, I'm not going to say like go over the top per se, but you might have to be loud in order for you to be taken seriously. Okay. So we also have... I am kind and loving toward others while creating clear boundaries that protect my good feeling emotions. So you may have people around you that may not agree with what you're doing. They may not agree with who you are with. They may not agree with what direction you are going in life. But anybody who is not happy for your happiness and if they are not happy with you doing better for yourself then you need to take a look at that and not listen to outside people trying to take you off your journey of what is right for you this goes along with temptation so if you have a lot of naysayer friends or you have family who don't believe what you're doing or they don't believe in what you're doing, you need to be mindful about what energy you allow in and not be tempted in being taken off your path. No distractions. This is where you need to set clear boundaries and let letting it be known. Part of being 
part of showing how serious you can be is also showing what strong boundaries you can set. So if you've had a lot of people in your business before, you need to be loud with your boundaries and say, look, no, this isn't happening. And I'm not talking about like just ignoring somebody and just shutting your door and walking away. No, you need to be verbal. You need to let it be known. You need to set that boundary so that way it is definitely set. This, this shows how strong you are with what it is that you want in your life and how you want it and how you respect it and how you protect it. So we also have in stillness, I receive. And once again, this goes along with the temperance card. This is, this is the card that I got excited about when I read it because you had the, you had the hanged man and you also had the temperance card. So with those two, it shows how you're sitting in the space of love. You're sitting in the space of, I am appreciative. I'm going to show the universe I want to keep this. I want to show, you know, this connection that it is serious to me. You know, like you are sitting in that vibration. And you're, as long as your mindset is there, as long as your heart is there, you're going to be able to keep that. And you're not even going to have to work that hard. The reason why is because it's the right fit. It's the right thing. And I feel like that you know that. It's like, I don't even have to try hard at this. It just, it just unravels so naturally. Because this is what's meant for you. So we also have, I accept the good things. Eh. I accept that good things come easily. I am a super attractor. And you are. Don't make things more difficult than what they are. Make sure you're setting those strong boundaries. And you'd be surprised on how much everything changes after that. So we also have, when I cultivate a spiritual connection, I can trust the universe no matter what. Look at the green. The green and all the stars. Following your heart. Knowing what is good for you. And the word cultivate. It's right there. You are building something very strong. It's going to be there for a long time. It's going to be extremely substantial. And it's going to have a very strong and stable foundation. So that is what I have for you, my lovely Aries. Be sure to give me a thumbs up. Comment down below if you resonate. Share and subscribe if you want to. I'm sending you all kinds of love, light, healing, and protection. Have a great year, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hello, my Leo babies. So I am going to get started on what 2024 is bringing you in the love department. If you want to listen to your sun, moon, rising, and your Venus and you don't know what they are, I'm putting the chart down below in the description box. So that way you can get a full picture of what's coming to you for 2024. Alright. So, Spirit, what do you got for my Leo babies for love for 2024? I am getting lost in the shuffle. I just love how it sounds. Just listen to that soothing. I love that. Okay. So already that right there, this, I actually am feeling like a wave of happiness, serenity. I am feeling, and this is before I even pull any cards, happiness, serenity, peacefulness, trust. Um, I'm literally seeing a gateway open to like a garden. So there could be something about that. I'm not really sure what I'm seeing. You may know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh my goodness. And we have the Queen of Cups popping out right out. 
So that's a lot of nourishing. That's a lot of nourishing. You could be dealing with a Cancer, Pisces, or a Scorpio. We also have the Two of Pentacles. And you don't have to be dealing with any of those signs, by the way. Um, the Queen of Pentacles could also be your own energy. But I'm really feeling like somebody is wanting to nurture you, wanting to baby you. Um, with the Two of Pentacles... It's about balancing things out. It's It could be about money um, the, because Pentacles is all about money. But it could also be just about making something more strong and doing it a lot through love. We have the Judgment card. Oh, okay. So the Judgment card popping out tells me that this is something that you need to put to rest. There's something that you need to put to rest. We have the King of Cups popping out sideways. Okay. All right. So I feel like that there's an energy that's coming in or there's an energy around you that wants to show you how they want to be a participant. And with the judgment card, you're like, I don't know if I want to do that. The judgment card and then the King of Cups coming out sideways tells me that it's almost like you have one foot in and one foot out. It's almost like the jury is still out. You're still being nice. You're still being loving and you're still willing to go through a transition. But we also have the Ace of Pentacles coming out in reverse. So this could be, and then we have the Ten of Cups. Okay. Yep. This is a new beginning that you're not sure that you want. I feel like that you could be waiting to see. Um how trustworthy a person is you could be waiting to see how loving they are there's something about you waiting to see with the ace of pentacles in reverse this could be a situation where you have drained yourself and now you're getting to a place like when it comes to the ten of cups it's like you're getting to a place of realizing how important your emotional stability is and so somebody wants to feed that into you. It's almost like, okay, yeah, I may have helped you drain that. So let me help you replenish it. And I feel like this person is trying to help you balance out. We have the five of pentacles in the bottom deck energy. So five of pentacles is feeling left out in the cold, feeling behind, uh, feeling like somebody uh, did you wrong. Um, there's a feeling of not being supported the way you needed to be supported. So I feel like you are moving out of this energy. And you notice how the panda, this panda has their arm around this other panda. So there's a sense of somebody trying to help you out of this space. And it very well could have been the person who caused you to feel this way. So I feel like they could be trying to um, show you a lot of nourishment. Remember I told you what my energy felt like in the very beginning. I feel like that could be what they're trying to show you. Trying to open up a gateway of showing you a different way or a different view or how to go forward in a positive way. I don't see you walking away from this. I just see you being a bit defensive with the judgment card. I feel like what you're trying to put to rest is the uneasy feeling. I don't see you literally walking away from it. I just see you being in a state of, I'm going to be here, so I need to work on this. And while you're working on it, you're being extremely aware of how you feel. You're being extremely aware of whether it makes you happy or not. Before you can go forward in a solid way, you have to feel solid about the connection. And so even though I don't see you walking away, I see you being in limbo as to whether it's something that you, you want to continue. Like I said, the jury is still out. And with the King of Cups showing up and it showing up sideways, it tells me that you actually do love the connection, 
but you don't know if it's good for you. Like we can love things all day long, but that doesn't mean it's good for you. And I feel like this person that's trying to balance things out, they are trying to show you that they actually are not bad for you. They want to be good for you. They don't want to be that toxic drain. They want to be somebody that replenishes you. And I feel like that this is what they're trying to prove to you now. So under the five of pentacles, there's also the eight of wands. The eight of wands is fast coming communication, something that's kind of sideswipe you, something that you're not even going to see coming. It's almost like one of those things of snap out of it. There's going to be something that happens that makes you snap out of this five of pentacles energy. It's going to snap you out of feeling alone. It's going to, it's going to prove to you and it's going to catch you off guard. It's going to catch you off. Uh, it's going to catch you by surprise. But we have the world card here. So the world card is, you know, showing that something is indeed right within this connection. Okay. But that doesn't mean that you don't have feelings along the way. This doesn't mean that you, you're you not valid for feeling pain or feeling hurt, you know. Um, so even though you're staying in a loving position, you're really holding your ground and you're just like, I'm skeptical, but I'm going to watch and observe and I'm just going to see what happens. So with the Ten of Cups being present, you know, it tells me that you are really strong when it comes to your emotional stability. It's like, um, you're willing to give it a chance. It's like, I'm, I, it's, it's almost like I'm willing to give it a chance, but don't fuck up and don't disappoint me. You know, like, don't make me regret giving you another chance. You know, like, there is that kind of vibe going on but with the three of pentacles coming out after the world and with the page of swords and then the seven of pentacles it's going to be work ahead it's going to be very stable and very abundant and there's going to be you know work on both sides so you're not going to be the only one to be working here and it it might take a few hiccups or it might take some um I'm not seeing full-fledged arguments but there may be some disagreements but shit what relationship doesn't have disagreements but it's like breaking up isn't an option it's about working through the disagreements and you know realizing with the seven of pentacles realizing that this is worth the work and you actually seeing that bigger picture Instead of just looking at the small fragment of what you're in right this minute. So we also have the Knight of Cups. And we have the Ace of Cups. So there is going to be some kind of resolution to where, you know, we're going to put in the hard work. And we're going to have this brand new beginning with a clean slate when it comes to love. So this is, this is very beautiful. <laughs> Then we have the Four of Pentacles. Even though we have the Ace of Cups, brand new beginning of love, I feel like that there's still a part of you that could be kind of skeptical. Because we have the Seven of Swords and we have the Four of Pentacles right after the Ace of Cups. So even if you are agreeing to a new beginning of love, there's still a part of you that is just kind of watching and waiting. I'm not saying that you are bringing in the energy that something is going to go bad but you're keeping your eyes and your ears open it's like you're enjoying the moment for what it is you're taking it all in but if you see anything skeptical you're gonna fucking question it if you see anything out of the way or something that rubs you the wrong way you're not gonna just sit there and wait on it you're not gonna care what the answer is if it's rubbing you the wrong way then you're going to talk about it I don't see you letting it fester. And it's like, I'm basically with the four of pentacles being there along with the seven of swords, 
The Seven of Swords is also about finding a different strategy. So maybe in the past you weren't so vocal. Maybe you would observe something and you were afraid of putting waves in the water. You know, because a lot of people who uh, hurt our feelings get mad when you bring it to their attention of how they hurt you. And it's like they don't want to hear about it. And they want to get mad at you for feeling whatever it was that they put you through, which is stupid. But that's what happens. So it's like now you're not giving a shit about that. It's like I'm I'm looking at this as making me feel some kind of way. And I don't care how you feel about me speaking on how I feel. So there, there's like a, a, a different strategy of what you're doing. And it's almost like um, as soon as you see a shift... You don't have a problem taking a step back. It's like, ho, 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 wait a minute. First of all, they shouldn't be trying you. <laughs> okay. Second of all, it's like, you don't have to put in anything that somebody else isn't putting in. You just don't have to do that. So, the, I feel like with the Seven of Swords coming out here, and right after the Seven of you, Seven of Swords, we have the chariot. So it's about finding a different strategy of being focused, keeping your eye on the prize, and realizing you can work through these things. You can work through, um, like, let's say you, you have, like, a, a nudge because you feel like your partner is talking to somebody, getting text messages or whatever, you have no problem with saying, you know, I don't know what you're doing, but I have this vibe about this. And it's going to be up to them to prove things to you. You know, um, I'm a firm believer that your partner, it's not up to your partner to keep you happy, but it is up to your partner to show you that they can be trusted. It is up to your partner to show you that you are secure and safe within the relationship. And that means you being human. That means you, you know, calling out what you need to call out when it, when it comes to how you feel. Sometimes you're going to be spot on, but sometimes you're going to be wrong. And it's up to them to not make you feel bad either way. Especially if they know already what they have put you through. So it's about understanding. And just because you trust a person doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect with it all the time. And so I feel like that you're realizing this and you're like, you know what? I can trust you 325 days out of the year. That's still the majority of the year that I trust you. But there's going to be times that I don't trust you because I'm going to get a vibe or I'm going to see something or I'm going to do this or you're going to be acting a certain way and I'm going to be picking up on it. Some of those you're going to be right and some of those you're going to be wrong. But either way, it's up to your partner to show you that you are safe and being and feeling what you are, whoever you are, whatever it is that you're feeling, you are valid and feeling that. And so I feel like that is what the whole different focus is on. And that is the different strategy. And with the seven of swords popping up, it could tell, it, you know, it kind of tells me that maybe you did go through lies. Maybe you did go through deception, you know, and you don't want that in the future. So you're, you're definitely staying focused and staying determined on communication also with the chariot you could also be dealing with a cancer but you don't have to be so we do have the full card and the full card is all about you taking a chance and not even thinking about the outcome it's like you know what i'm gonna do this and i'm not even gonna think about the outcome I'm going to do it, not think about the outcome. I'm going to go day by day, step by step, moment by moment, and that's going to determine however the future is going to play out. We also have the Queen of Pentacles. You could also be dealing with the Virgo Capricorn Taurus. So when it comes to the Queen of Pentacles, the Queen of Pentacles is very steady, 
you know, um, and with the Queen of Cups here too, geez, that's a really good um, combination. So the Queen of Pentacles is somebody who is also very nourishing, a very giving, um, a very hard worker, somebody who's very grounded. So I feel like that you're, you're having, you're definitely being shown this and this very well could be your own energy. The three of wands is about you just waiting to see what comes. You know, just like what I said, step by step, day by day, you're looking to see what's coming next, but you're doing it in a good way. You're absolutely doing it in a good way. It's like, you're not trying to push it. You're not trying to rush anything. You're not trying to, to hold on to bad vibes. You're, you're letting things go as they come. But you're also verbalizing what you need to verbalize in the moment that it's happening. And if people get mad, well, guess what? <laughs> so what? I'm about trying to find resolution. And if you don't want to do that, you want me to hold it in. You don't want me to say anything. Well, then maybe the seed shouldn't have been planted in the first place. So let's go. What are we going to do? You know, so I feel like that that's kind of the vibe that you're going to be carrying on to where once again, you care about keeping the connection healthy. It's like, but you, you don't want to feel suppressed. You don't want to feel like you have to hold anything back. You want to feel like you're in a safe place and you're with an understanding and nourishing partner that realizes, okay, this person, you know, Leo is like this because of what they have gone through and also by what I have put them through. So it's kind of, once again, the judgment card being there. It's just something that they're going to have to deal with as time goes on. You know, I feel like that if the shoe was on the other foot, you would have no problem proving yourself. And that's probably a lot of it right there. Like if somebody didn't trust you and you, um, let's say you did do something untrustworthy, you know, let's say you did, you did something untrustworthy. Um, how would you feel if they said, let me look at your phone or I feel this vibe around you. I get the vibe, knowing how Leos are, I feel like that you would be like, I have no problem. Here's my phone. Here's the code to it. Have a, you know, have a field day with it. You know, go through whatever you want. And you're not going to take it hard because you know that out of love, sometimes you have to make that other person feel secure. So... If it doesn't hurt you and it doesn't hinder you and it's going to help you build up, you're like, why the fuck not? I don't care. You know, you can look at it. I'm not going to be offended. Did you get what you needed? Do you need me to open up any files? <laughs> you know, like, do you need me to show you everything? I have no problem doing it. And it's because you want your partner to feel secure. You know, that is, that is part of what you should be doing. So... You're looking at it like, that's how I would be with you. So I feel like that's how you should be with me. So we're going to pull some cards from the universe to see what messages come through. All right, spirit. What lovely messages do you have? For my Leo babies. For 2024. Mm. Look at all the red too. Look at all the red. We're going to take this one. All right. And then we have the bottom deck energy. Look, already off top, we have feeling. I haven't read it yet, but good feeling. And we have feeling good. Okay. So, 
I trust that my powerful intentions combined with my faith are enough to allow my vision to become my reality. Remember I told you that there's something shifting within you? To show who you become? To show that you're more vocal? But you're coming from a healthy place. You're having faith in the universe of taking it one day, one step, one second at a time. We also have, when I'm connected to spirit, I feel a sense of certainty, magnitude, and ease that I've never known before. Trusting that you don't necessarily need to know the outcome, but you're taking a chance on it anyway. This is the full card coming out. So we also have, when I'm in a state of appreciation, I'm in vibrational alignment with my true love nature. And that has everything to do with your environment. You're trying to make sure that your environment is stable so you can be your true authentic self. And anything or anyone who disrupts that, you're not putting up with it. You're absolutely not putting up with it. You do accept people for being human, but hurting you on a regular basis is not something that you will put up with. You can still walk away from people and have love for them. But that doesn't mean that you're going to give them a golden engraved invitation to keep hurting you. And I feel like that, you know, this person in your life, they are knowing that, they're realizing that, and they're seeing how strong you are. So we also have feeling good will bring me far more than whatever I thought I needed. And this goes right along with, remember I told you in the beginning, happiness, a sense of peace. You know, regardless what happens with this connection, you have a sense of peace that you did everything that you needed to do and you did everything that you could do in this situation and that the rest is out of your hands. And so with that, you can rest assured yourself and have that no regrets attitude because you already overturned all the stones. We also have my ability to receive is measured by how much I practice good feeling thoughts. You may in the past, you may have felt like that you don't deserve happiness or you feel like you don't deserve a healthy relationship, but that is turning around for you. You realize what you bring to the table. And with practice, you're going to start respecting yourself. And by you doing it more and more and more, that is going to teach others how to treat you. How you treat yourself will be projected out to others on how they should be treating you. All right, so don't cut any corners with yourself. There's no cutting corners with yourself. Keep your eye on the prize and stay determined. All right, so that is what I have for you, my Leo babies. Please like your video, comment down below. Let me know if you resonate. Um, share if you want to all that good stuff, but make sure you subscribe. I'm sending you all kinds of love, light, healing, and protection. Have a great year, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.